Good Sunday morning, everybody. Live and direct from downtown Memphis, Tennessee. I'm meteorologist Austin Onik with a quick weather update for you for very early on Sunday morning. Conditions are improving by just a little bit where fog and rainfall is concerned. We're going to be seeing a very mild day coming up with no problems basically whatsoever after we get done with the morning hours. But as we go into later on this week, we are still monitoring for the potential of a new winter storm to come a little bit closer to the Mid-South area. Conditions are looking a little bit better where it comes to the possibility of anything involving, say, freezing rain or sleet. Still the potential right now, the main possibility is going to be for snowfall in the parts of the Mid-South area. We're just not looking at a lot of major activity for the time being, but we will continue again to monitor that. We'll have updates on that forecast for you coming up here in just a little bit, so stick around for that. Coming up, we've also got a check of what's going on in the Mid-South extended forecast here in just a little bit. We've got more webcams, and you can check a stick at and we've got also again a possibility of severe weather in the mid-south over the next several weeks and months how do you get ready for that we'll help you by telling you when the next meetings are from the national weather service if you'd like to know more about volunteering for skywarn and using your eyes ears and brains to help spot for severe weather keeping everybody else safer in the mid-south area you can help with that and we'll tell you how coming up here in just a little bit hopefully you had a chance to tune into news channel 3 daybreak with myself and nina harrelson we are monitoring Again, a lot of stuff going on out there for the time being. We'll have more updates coming up tonight on News Channel 3 at 5. If you're just joining us, thanks a lot for stopping on by to watch what's going on in the Mid-South area. Please, if you can, drop your location and your weather reports from the area into the comments section down below. If you can't stick around for the whole forecast, that's okay. We've got, again, forecast in a nutshell right here, our what to expect forecast plus Lower portion of your screen, blue bar down here, you can see the forecast scrolling along from right to left and keeping you updated at any point in time. So if you can't stick around for the whole thing, that's great, but thanks for watching nonetheless if you're out there. So again, temperatures, wind speeds, direction, cloud cover, put them into the comments section. Plus, if you want more snowfall, let us know. Say yay or nay to anything involving snowfall if you'd like to see some more of it out there. A lot of you have some very strong opinions one way or the other, so if you'd like to tell us more about whether you do or don't like more snowfall, here's the time to do it. Not a great opportunity to do so. Again, for the rest of the day, cloud cover out there will be heading out of the picture and we should be seeing sunny skies coming our way for later on today and those winds out of the northeast they'll be escorting in some drier air but also some cooler air into the next couple of days we'll see some more on that coming up in just a little bit treva donaldson from sioux falls south dakota welcome to the show say hello to my friend uh, jill Lowe. she's from around that area she's now back in atchison kansas but she and her family used to live uh, up that direction not too long ago Riyad Goshe, hope I'm saying that right, from Cordova, need good weather. We'll try to set you up with that. Kimberly Mashburn Davis, Saltillo, Mississippi. David Walden, any word on the snow this week? We'll talk about that coming up here in just a little bit as well. And thanks to everybody else from into and around the area. Harry Hayes from... I'm assuming that's UK, Wales possibly, I'm not sure, but uh, was UK. Thank you very much for uh, dropping on by. And everybody else who's checking in for right now, 43 degrees in Bartlett, Paulette Anders. Thank you very much uh, for that one. Betty Levingston, one vote no for snow. Thank you very much there. And just clouds in Horn Lake, no snow, Trudy F4. Thank you very much uh, for joining us. 52 degrees, Veronica miller windows from Fayetteville, Tennessee. Wow, I was just up that direction not too long ago. My son is at uh, ETSU over in Johnson City, so nice to see somebody from that side of the state for this time around. Rest of the day today, again, mainly just cloud cover diminishing across the area. At least we're not seeing weather like this. Some of the worst weather in the country found on top of Mount Washington in New Hampshire. And the visibility at this time, almost zero at the Mount Washington Weather Observatory. You can access this information through my social media pages. Again, you can find those here. And again, our forecast available at WREG.com. And that includes our seven-day forecast as well. Nation's capital, the Washington Monument just visible. The Potomac River and much of the inner beltway socked in by fog and a little bit of drizzle out there for this morning. So kind of a dim start to the day in and around the D.C. area. A little bit more cloud cover leaving the area. The 
the northwest view from the Rhodes College camera and central Memphis showing clearing skies looking back to the northwest on the weather underground system. From the weather bug system this morning, towers of Poplar and Mendenhall, water towers north of Germantown High School, Poplar Pike and Germantown Road. Good visibility for this morning. Fog has been lifting across the area. A little breezy out there, so we do have some wind chills back in the lower 40s, 45 degrees currently at Germantown. Nice view of downtown Memphis over the Peabody Hotel, Union Avenue, the, around the area of AutoZone Park, and downtown Memphis lit up by some sunshine, but still some clouds out there, a few jet contrails from time to time, and that's going to be about all that we see out there for now. Delays at Memphis International Airport, not seeing anything at this time. Fair skies, that means no clouds below 12,000 feet, so again, fair skies for right now. North winds at about 9. Green icon indicates delays of 15 minutes or less, or basically no delays to report there, and likewise, good travel across the continental United States where it comes to anything involving air travel. More information, go to this website, fly.faa.gov, or for more weather information, again, you've got wreg.com slash weather for more information on that. Welcome to everybody who's checking in for this morning. 57 in Jackson, Melissa Feathers, thank you very much. Uh, three votes for Snow, Devarius Riley, thank you very much. Uh, for that one, Warner Robins, Georgia, reigning Samuel Pocketman Rose Jr. Welcome to the show for this morning and everybody else uh, checking in from around the area for this morning. Thanks a lot for joining us. Fog just past 8 o'clock is diminishing, but there are still some pockets out there, especially northwest Tennessee, the Boot Hill, northeast Arkansas. Visibilities below one mile, much improved across much of the rest of the Mid-South, but there are going to be those pockets of fog out there. Now, because the visibilities are improved by so much, the National Weather Service has canceled the dense fog advisory that was in effect from overnight, so looks like visibility is not a major concern, but still, if you are traveling, you need to allow for that potential out there if you run into some fog across the Mid-South. Light scattered showers diminishing, heading out of the Mid-South over northeast Mississippi, and eventually going to be working their way into around northern parts of Alabama if they survive the next hour or so, making their way a little bit closer to around the area of the close to around northwestern Alabama and the Tennessee River Valley. Now, what we're also looking for over the next couple of days, very active weather going on out west. Come on, touch screen. Let's see if we can get this. Okay, apologies for this cranky computer again for this morning. And as of right now, what we are seeing out to the west, oh, this is really cranky. Okay, sorry about this. We may have some more problems on here. We're looking again at our next storm system over my shoulder here. I have to step out of the way because apparently I can't move this thing anywhere. Uh, we have this next storm system, large burst of energy over parts of the Gulf of Alaska. This is going to be making its way into the western continent and going to be, again, dislodging a lot of cold air and eventually getting a possibility of some energy dropping our direction later on this week. So our next storm system is several days away, but it is taking shape over the Pacific Ocean, and it is going to be heading our direction into the course of the next several days. So we're already watching it. What it does when it gets here, well, we'll talk more about that coming up here in just a little bit. Live real-time weather across the Mid-South showing temperatures back in the mid to upper 30s to lower 40s. These are some of the coolest numbers out there. You can catch the weather bug system available at wreg.com slash weather. If you'd like to get the closest weather bug station to you, thousands of stations across the United States. So look them up and take a look and see what's available out there. And you can see a little bit more about wind chill and rainfall amounts and all that cool stuff. Again, that's available at wreg.com slash weather. All right, let's run the numbers into the rest of the day. Lunchtime numbers, again, going to be looking at the possibility of numbers in the upper 40s to the lower 50s. Devarius Riley, when does it snow again exactly? Well, we'll talk about when possibly, maybe not exactly, coming up here in just a little bit. Jeff Livingston, 45 degrees in Eads, Tennessee. Uh, from Thailand, welcome to the show. I Still need to learn how to pronounce your name. I'm not good at speaking Thai, unfortunately, so uh, you have to tell me a little bit more about that coming up here uh, in just a little bit. Uh, anybody else checking in for right now? We had a little snow in South Dakota. Treva Donaldson, thank you very much uh, on that one. Beautiful outside in Munford. Christine Johnson, thank you very much. McNary County Healthcare, Selma, Tennessee, Selmer, Tennessee, from Stacy Dowdy. Uh, welcome to the show from everybody for this morning. Rest of the rainfall, what's left of it, just 
again, pockets of light showers could linger across northeast Mississippi into the early afternoon hours, but most of it is already gone and should be staying that way into the rest of the day. Highs, even though the winds are out of the north, will be back in the mid to upper 50s, so a very comfortable day. A little cool, but not bad, but dry across the mid-south, and dry clear skies means lots of sunshine for today, so very comfortable out there for the rest of the evening. News Channel 3 at 10, back in the mid to upper 30s to lower 40s. Daybreak tomorrow morning, a few clouds drifting on through the mid-south. And numbers by about News Channel 3 live at 9 will be trying to get back upwards into the upper 30s to around the lower 40s. Now, later on this week, again, everybody's got questions about this next system coming on through. We've been tracking this for several days. And right now, again, the potential for anything involving anything really huge or what we've seen over the last couple of days really just not looking that good at this point in time for several reasons. We're not seeing, again, the potential of a large burst of cold air that's going to be around long enough or deep enough in the atmosphere to sustain a big snowstorm coming on through. Notice again where the snow line kind of stops, southern Missouri, northeast Arkansas, and northwest Tennessee. This is just one computer model that we use to forecast the information that we present to you here on News Channel 3 or again at our website, wrhg.com slash weather. So what we're looking for is we're going to be on the southern fringe of this system as it comes on through. So the warmer air down here, transition zone between rain, sleet, and snow, if there is any, right along that border right there. And then more chances of snowfall well back up to our north. And that's going to be, again, what we see for the most part here. Starting Thursday evening into southern Missouri, southern Illinois, western Kentucky, and some of that, according to this particular model, drops into the boot heel and right around northwest Tennessee. And that's, again, Thursday evening. Going forward, forward a little bit farther, some of that, again, it looks like it's going to be affecting more middle Tennessee than anything else. Lots of Kentucky, the Ohio River Valley, back up to around Chicago, Cincinnati, into around Indianapolis for the most part. Now, on this computer model here, these lines up here showing again the potential for snowfall is here, white to blue to purple. The potential for freezing rain and sleet should be showing up as target zones round about mid-south right along this line. They're not showing up on this model. So from yesterday, we had a couple of target points around the mid-south area. Right now, we're not seeing that. So this is for some of you, a slight improvement. For those of you who want more winter weather, you may be a little disappointed at that. But the main thing we're looking at right now, if we get anything, and confidence, I'll tell you at this point in time, is not high regarding this system giving us a potential of anything measurable. But if anything does happen, it's going to be right around this particular area here, maybe dipping down into the Tennessee River Valley as we get into very early Friday morning, around the time we hit February 2nd, Groundhog Day, right past midnight. Most of that heads its way on out of the picture. And by the time we get into around daybreak, early Friday morning, it's all over with. So the potential at this point in time is there, no question about that. But the possibility of winding up with a major winter storm at this time so far, it does not appear to be good. Now, once again, one out of about maybe a baker's dozen of computer models that we use to talk about this, these will change over the next several days. So again, this forecast you're looking at here at wreg.com slash weather, our seven-day forecast that we feature on air and online, these numbers will be changing. So the best thing you can do is, again, stay tuned to, for updates on this. Also, once again, if you didn't hear me talk about this yesterday, if you've never tried winter weather forecasting before, I urge you to give it a shot. It's my least favorite season to forecast in because all it takes is just when the layers of the atmosphere are relatively cold all the way up into around the troposphere and into that area, one layer of warm air can mess up an entire forecast, change something to rainfall, another portion to areas of freezing rain and sleet, or if dry air makes its way on through, you wind up with nothing whatsoever. That's what happens with these scenarios. It's not, again, anything that we try to make up on the fly for this. This is the best forecast models that we've got out there. And if you want to give this a try, I'd urge you to take a look at the computer models we use out there and to see what you think is going to happen. And if you take a look at them and you have a forecast, again, estimation out there that you want to post in online ahead of schedule, hey, go for it. No problem at all with me. And we'd love to be able to see your estimations on your forecast, what you think is going to happen. But right now, again, the potential is there. 
Still way too early to talk about amounts, but we are going to be watching this if it goes away or starts to get a little stronger. We will notice this over the course of the next few days, so stay tuned for more on that. And again, winter weather forecasting, if you want a challenge, there it is for you right there. So please take a look at that if you want to give something a try that you've never done before. So something else to take a look at for right now. Let's see. I would never, I wouldn't be disappointed if I never saw any winter precipitation, period. Marshall Border. Okay, that's one vote. No. Thank you very much. Loretta Boatman. No sleet, please, in all caps. Thank you very much. Good morning from Collierville. Good day for a hike. Actually, Julie Jeffrey, yeah, it is looking pretty good at this point in time if you want to head out the door pretty soon. For right now, could be some fog out there early this morning. And again, seeing the possibility of some sunshine. Daffodils blooming. Ripley, Tennessee. Yvonne Kirby. A little bit early, but okay, no problem at all. A little bit more sunshiny with the flowers out there. Mid to upper 50s today. Clearing skies throughout the rest of the morning into this afternoon. And then Monday, temperatures drop a bit, almost a full category into the mid-40s. Still on the sunny side, a few clouds out there as well. Lower 40s for Tuesday. Again, a bit on the chilly side as that cold air spills on down from the north, so we'll continue to see that out there. We'll bounce back on the temperatures to just above normal Wednesday and Thursday. And that's good news because the rainfall chances will begin late, late Wednesday evening into Thursday, continue across the area on Thursday. Then that cold air mixes on through. We see numbers drop to just below freezing early Friday morning, which means we could see, again, some changeover to that winter-type precipitation. But I'm guessing at this point in time, for right now, it looks like it's going to be the morning, and that should be about it. And then by the time we get into around Dawn Patrol Friday, whatever we get in the way of winter-type precipitation, if we get anything whatsoever, is going to be gone and heading over to our east. So the chances of winter weather, yes, they're there. But right now, they're looking a lot more limited than what they were just a few days ago. And that was dealing with a forecast that was about 300-plus hours out. Now we're getting a little bit more cohesion, and we can see a little bit more about what's going on. Now, through next weekend, a little bit chilly on Saturday, but dry. Rain chances return next Sunday, the first full weekend of February 2018. And for a true American holiday involving weather, National Weather Person's Day is coming up Monday, February 5th, as opposed to furry fake forecaster day out there. I mean, seriously, taking your weather advice from a rodent that doesn't want to be disturbed from his hole in the ground, I ask you, how scientific is that? But again, I digress. Right now, again, looking at 50s as we go toward next Monday. Again, National Weather Person's Day, just throwing it out there for you to know about that. And scattered light chances of rainfall, but that's going to be about all that we wind up with for the time being, so not seeing a lot of problems there. Now, no severe weather in the next few days. Now, when the weather is calm and quiet, is the time to get ready for the potential of severe weather. Learning what needs to be done, what to look for before, during, and after severe weather. These are the first four meetings taught by the National Weather Service. There's about a baker's dozen of them coming up around the Mid-South. They rotate around the counties over the course of a several years' time so that a lot of different communities have the opportunity to experience the Skywarn training sessions. They last about an hour, hour and a half, Great opportunity to learn more about weather and science and how you can get ready for severe weather, participating in emergency preparedness and communication. You and your cell phone or your amateur radio or your website sending information via text to the National Weather Service through their website storm reports area. You can help keep your neighbors safe and a lot of other people in the Mid-South you don't even know by just watching what's going on with the weather. And these are the places to do it. The National Weather Service meteorologists will train you to get ready for severe weather. You'll get a special phone number that you can use with this handy dandy thing, keeping it with you at all times. And if you see something going on in the Mid South area, you can call in the information to the National Weather Service. They will broadcast it out to the community, especially to people like us here at News Channel 3, so we can tell everybody what you are seeing and get the people in the path of those storms ready to go. That right there is life saving information, and you can take part in this by joining Skywarn as a volunteer spotter. So if you'd like to know more, Sumner, Mississippi, the first one, Tuesday, February 13th, one week after that in Wynn, Arkansas, Thursday, February 22nd in Lexington, Tennessee, and Thursday, March 1st around Trenton, Tennessee at the Gibson County Emergency Operations Center. Where's the one for Memphis and Shelby County? 
not on this list yet, but it will be coming up over the next several weeks, so stay tuned for more on that. And if you'd like to know more, again, all you have to do is visit this website, wreg.com slash weather. Scroll down below the forecast, and you'll get more of the information coming up there. Tune in for my forecast throughout the rest of the weekend, Country 92.5 and Oldies 102.3. If you can't catch the forecast because you're out and about doing things, and of course, I'll be live with Bob and Josh tomorrow morning from 8 to 10 a.m. and throughout the course of the rest of the week, so thank you very much uh, for that. That Harry Hayes from South Wales, uh, South Wales Valley, UK. Well, pip pip cheerio, and thanks for joining us from across the pond in my best Anglophile accent that I can manage without making a fool out of myself. So thank you very much for joining us from the United Kingdom for this morning. David Watson, David Walden, hoping for some snow. Not really going to be seeing a great deal, but we'll keep an eye on that. See everybody else out there from the area. Calgary, Alberta, welcome to the show. Stacy Shepard, uh, Cold Hard, can't even, man, two point typeface and bifocals just do not work all that well. Cold Hard, uh, Cold Hard, hope I'm saying that fairly close right there. Always wanted to get up that direction. Heard some great things about that area uh, into and around Canada. More information on my forecast again throughout the rest of the day on News Channel 3's website, wreg.com slash weather. And of course, we'll be on again tonight on News Channel 3 at 5 and 10, so stay tuned for more on the forecast there. And of course, Todd Demers will have his forecast coming up bright and early on Monday morning to get your week started and make certain you get off to work or school on a safe note with more information on that. Corey Ventura will have traffic as well coming up early tomorrow morning. Morning. That'll wrap it up for this edition of News Channel 3's exclusive video weather blog, Weather Overtime. We've got a lot more to talk about throughout the next several days as this next storm system heads on through, so keep track of our forecast here at wreg.com slash weather, and more again tonight on News Channel 3 at 5 and 10. Live and direct from downtown Memphis, Tennessee, I'm meteorologist Austin Onik. Thank you to everyone for joining us this morning for all your reports and comments, and stick around for a lot more throughout the rest of the weekend on News Channel 3, on air and online.